Sorry, Jambo. Jambo. Emmanuel. Jambo. There's all hot water. There's all hot water. Oh, so it's all hot water. you make the tea or the hot water or the chocolate. Should I go for the chocolate? And there's um, I'm not gonna a bad do idea. That so I don't get caffeine. <laughs>
Tata se obstruuje mu. What is it? Is that egg? Is that, is, is that an omelet? Right? Egg, pancake, and toast. Beautiful. There's evidence. <laughs> Dude, 
You can fight. You can crow. You are the pan. Peter Pan! So I have a pillow of him <laughs> and a canvas of him, and his party was Paw Patrol. Oh my god! Oh my god! So he you was had a, are a dog mom. That's for sure. He doesn't live with me anymore. It's really actually. Wait, how many cops? Was, was it was your family's dogs? Oh, no, he's mine. I mean, no, at the party. It was oh, it's yeah. Actually, like ten dogs are there. Oh wow. <laughs> that's Zoe. Nope. That's a new one. It's yeah, that's when we kind of adopted ish. They're really adopted. If it wasn't so cold, I don't think I'd mind as much. <laughs> I mean, I, like I knew what I was signing up for. Oh yeah, yeah. Is the book coming to bar today? Like learning how to speak. Like literally. Like. I'm not going to 
like to be. All right. Someone's like, all right, take one, take a quarter on the series. I'm going to take a quarter on the series. I'm going to take a quarter on the series. You didn't do it tomorrow? Yeah. Nah, I might do that. Yes. I think in the same sentence I said, I said I had lunch with Jonas last night. All right, get this money. And that was actually the last clip I recorded with my camera on the trip. And that's because I was starting to have a really, really difficult time with altitude sickness. And you can kind of start to see it definitely in my face and the amount of time I was spending in the tent. And honestly, my clips started to like decline in quality because I was trying to focus on eating, having an appetite, breathing, everything was becoming really, really tough for me. It was so frustrating because the distances between camps each day were not that much. It was like four, five, six miles with some elevation, but everything was so difficult because I wasn't getting enough oxygen. After dinner each night in the tent, they would use a little finger scanner to check our blood oxygen saturation levels. At sea level, you know, you're around 100%, meaning you're getting 100% of oxygen with each breath. You know, some people would drop down to 90 at those altitudes. Anything below 80 was kind of cause for concern. Mine dropped below 80, below 70, uh, and it just kept dropping. That last night was really tough, and the guides were really worried about me. They started to talk about, you know, possibly holding back or even going down. And during the night, they would check on me every so often uh, and give me supplemental oxygen and try to get me to drink as much as I could. Um, but around four o'clock, I was kind of like hyperventilating a little bit. And one of the last readings they gave me, I, sh I saw 55%, which is like, you need to go down. It's very dangerous at that point. The thing that caused the most concern was I was starting to cough and there was liquid in my lungs. Um, and if you, if I stayed at that altitude, there was a possibility that it could have got even worse, you know, so I had to go down. At 4 a.m. in the darkness, we put a headlamp on, we grabbed my stuff, two porters carried my bags and my stuff with one guide in front giving me oxygen. He had the tank in his back. Obviously, I wasn't able to film that much because I was just trying to survive. I had trekking poles and then the porters were helping me um, for a little bit. And then I was able to, you know, walk on my own as we started to dip in elevation. And then eventually the sun came out and it was much easier to see. I would stumble less, but it was very tough. You know, we took very quick, small breaks. We didn't have any food. 
I t- tried to drink during breaks, but it was like six hours straight, dropping down in elevation all the way to the bottom. And the porters and the guide uh, were just like amazing. You know, they helped me a lot, uh, but it was one of the toughest things I've ever had to do. It was embarrassing and it was difficult and it was the last thing I wanted to do. I wanted to summit with everyone else, but it was a dangerous situation and we definitely made the right call going all the way down. Once I made it to the bottom, I was absolutely exhausted and I took a shuttle back to Moshi to the hotel where, you know, the fight wasn't over. I had to try to get some appetite, super dehydrated. My pee was the darkest I had ever seen for two days straight. I slept probably 20 hours a day, like for two days straight. I was just in AC, trying to drink and eat whatever I could, super weak, still having, you know, coughs. The coughs were the toughest thing, just like, trying to get the phlegm. I coughed up a little bit of blood and mucus and it was not fun. Altitude sickness is a very, very serious thing and uh, it's no joke. So what did I do? I messed up, you know, obviously other people made it to the top and getting to the top from what I heard was no cakewalk either. It was very cold up there. The altitude was even more intense. Uh, I think people only stayed up there briefly because it was just snowy and cold and windy hard to breathe, uh, but it must have been beautiful. And yeah, I do want to get up there on my own at some point. So yeah, what did I do wrong? I didn't drink enough. Uh, I didn't take Diamox. Uh, Almost everyone in the group was taking the doctor prescribed altitude sickness medicine called Diamox. I know there's a couple others, um, but I didn't take any medicine. I wanted to see if I could do it without pills or medicine which was kind of stupid, you know. Um, I definitely didn't eat enough, drink enough, and I don't know, I don't know if you're able to prepare, but the medicine definitely would have helped for sure. All in all, you know, I'm happy Nelson invited me to join the group. It was a massive group of about 24, 23 tour hikers, and then the support, the porters, the guides, the chefs, we, we had over a hundred people in our group, which is way different than what I'm used to. Solo hiking, unguided, uh, but it was a very interesting experience. So thanks Nelson, thanks Axe Ventures. And if you wanna go on a tour like this, I know he's going back in December. Uh, Nelson has taken people up to Everest Base Camp. I know he's hiked on Everest before, very cool guy. Uh, you can check out you know, other tours, whatever he's up to, with a link in the description. And uh, yeah, geez, I'm, I'm like <sighs> kind of mad at myself. Like I said, it's a little embarrassing to not summit, um, but it was very serious and I messed up. I'm definitely going to go back to Kilimanjaro and summit. I will. I'm kind of very, very determined at this point to go back and beat the mountain. But, man, it was tough. It was really, really tough. But, all right, I'm, I'm going to get back to hikes uh, and keep going. Altitude sickness. It's serious. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.